Hi there guys, welcome to Box Pride. Uh, just going to drop this brief post-fight thoughts video on the fight that happened last night between David Price and Tony Thompson. As you well know by now, Tony Thompson scored the KO in the second round. Um, for me personally, and I know for many others, it was a bit of a surprise. Um, I wouldn't call it a shock, because as a boxing fan I've come to expect this type of thing now and again. I mean, it's only a, a couple of months ago we saw Manny Pacquiao go to sleep on the canvas against Juan Manuel Marquez, let's not forget. And boxing throws these things at you. This is why we, we enjoy the sport. This is why we watch it. This is why we follow it. Because it's it's very unpredictable. Um, and for guys on here like myself who give their thoughts on fights and uh, predictions, I guess, um, it's kind of weird to say that. Boxing is quite an unpredictable sport. Because you've got fists flying. Um, you've got these variables in the ring that are difficult to analyse and comprehend. And, however, I do feel, like I mentioned, uh, I did mention that Tony Thompson would be a step up in class for David Price and a tougher test than what he's had already. Um, I think some, not all, some people underestimated Tony Thompson. Uh, some didn't realise or respect his abilities and skills and the experience that he had. Um, I like to think that I did address those in my video. You can still check my pre-fight video, it's, it's up, um, the last video I posted. And uh, where I did say, you know, I pointed out Tony Thompson's strengths um, and about the only weakness I really pointed out, um, apart from being, you know, maybe physical attributes, was his age. Um, but in a way that kind of worked for him because he uses it well. He's kind of like a Bernard Hopkins in that he, he uses uh, his experiences and he, he has something in the ring that... You wonder how he does it. You wonder how he's able to stay out of danger, to cover himself up properly, and to um, you know turn the tables on his opponent, and to to keep in a fight, to stay in a fight against you know a younger a younger guy, a guy like David Price, um, and to give himself a chance. But he, he's just able to do these things. Um, it just proves you know time and time again we learn boxing's not um, you know it's not a bodybuilding contest. It's not. The, what physical shape you're in necessarily. Of course, I would advise um, any boxer to be in the best shape they can be, and I think it gives you um, it's better than better to be in good shape than not to be. But you know, when, even when we saw Thompson come in at, at the highest weight he's ever been, I feel I think it was um, two hundred and fifty odd pounds or whatever it is um, that he came in at, and he didn't look in the best of shape. Sometimes boxing just takes over, and some guys don't need to move that much to be effective um, they don't need to be the most mobile fit agile guys to to show their boxing prowess and I think that that's the type of fighter that Tony Thompson is I think that outside of the Klitschko's I genuinely feel and I felt this even before the price fight last night I feel that Tony Thompson is one of the toughest uh, tests out there aside from the, the champions uh, maybe um, Povetkin as well um, I think if you're looking to step up the fight at Klitschko, Tony Thompson's exactly the type of guy you need to, to pitch yourself against to, f to find that yardstick, to, to be able to measure up your abilities. Um, and as we saw last night, he's the type of guy that can you can come unstuck against. Um, I did express um, my concerns, not necessarily over David Price's chin, which we all have had concerns over, and many people are coming out now saying they always said about David Price's chin, there's nothing new there. If you go on Twitter, everyone was on about David Price's chin throughout his career. Um, I mean, of late, when he's as he's risen to prominence in, on the British scene, everyone's been saying about David Price's chin. You're not the only one. Um, it's it would actually be unusual for somebody not to be uh, concerned about David Price's chin. So there's nothing new there. Um, from his amateur days, that was the story. That was the feeling about him. Um, but I had concerns about his his actual defence. Um, how he was going to cover up that chin, how he can, um, you know, stop people landing directly on him, and uh, what we saw last night in that little exchange where he got stopped was that, like I said, Thompson is very good at shortening his punches, and he's very he's good on the inside, and as they come came a bit closer together and they were kind of off balance, I mean, Thompson was kind of turned away from Price, and then he he brought over brought over that right hand, and Price was just open. Um, it's just 
the type of thing he's not been really involved in that much before, and he came unstuck with it. Um, it sh just showed a lack of uh, defence, I guess, um, in this case. Um, the punch uh, didn't look too bad. Um, that's what a lot of people are saying. It didn't seem like a big knockout punch. Why did he go down? That's proving that he has nothing of a chin, um, a glass jaw, if you like. Um, listen, I'm, I'm always an advocate that we can never really tell just by watching what that fighter felt and how that punch actually landed. I think you know the the the, the head and the neck area of the body is extremely fragile. Um, you know, if you land in the right way, it really doesn't take that much force in some areas, um, particularly, I guess, around the back and the neck area. You know, you can kill someone by punching them there. Um, and it was... It didn't look powerful. It was a sort of glancing shot. But you don't... I just can't tell uh, just by looking exactly... That must have had some of, some effect. Um... Maybe it, it, you know, like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be a powerful shot to really put a guy, send the guy out of his senses, um, and to, to to confuse him and disorientate him, and that's definitely what it did to Price. Um, just without, you know, one last thought really on um, the fickleness we see with boxing fans and people who follow boxing, and some who just don't, some who just leave messages after the biggest, the bigger fights. Um, there are a lot of fickle people out there. One minute they follow a fighter, and as soon as he loses, they're on to the next person who's unbeaten. Um, I'm, I am I try not to be like that. I don't want to be a fickle person. Um, I was um, a fan of David Price. Not I'm not saying I was a, a fanboy or an overly uh, enthusiastic supporter. I thought genuinely he was one, probably our best prospect for uh, in the UK for, for the next UK world champion. I just felt... He had um, the best physical attributes, and the way he was taking guys out, um, although, like I, like I said, rather than tested thus far, it, he did look good. Um, and I also, um, on, the on the on the other hand, I also like Tyson Fury. Um, I've never really been I've never been as much of a fan of his as I was of David Price's because I just thought Price was better, um, and still. Um, just because Price lost this fight, I would still have to analyse the fight between him and Fury and really, you know, come to a decision based on 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 research as to, as to who I would think would win that fight. Um, and might I just say, Fury's got a very tough fight uh, next, in my opinion, as he goes to the US to face Steve Cunningham. Okay, Cunningham is a blown-up cruiserweight, uh, and if you look at his record, he does lack a bit of power, but that size. Uh, this you know size differential may help Cunningham because Cunningham's quite quick, and um, if he can get inside and land a few blows on on Tyson Fury, you know that's a pot potential banana skin there for Fury. Um, and credit to him for taking it. Um, I I know, like I said, Cunningham is is known as a cruiserweight, but he, just to go to the US um, at this stage of his career and take on a guy like Cunningham who has a bit of, of speed and has been there with in there with other top guys already. Um, it, it takes, you know, some courage to do that and to step out and really take some belief to do that. So, um, you know, we'll see how Tyson Fury gets on with that. Um, a lot of people now saying, uh, you know, coming out of the woodwork, saying they're a very, you know, big fan of Tyson Fury. They always felt he'd beat Price, etc., etc. Um, that may be so, but to me, I, I don't feel you have to pick one or the other. Um, I never felt I had to. Um, I follow both guys and... I liked what Tyson Fury did with Channel 5, or he's been doing with Channel 5, I think it's great. I said that before in my other videos. I like the fact that he's helped boxing come to terrestrial television, um, and you know, long may that continue. Um, we're going to see what happens moving forward. Can Price pick himself up? I think uh, we'll just have to wait and see. It's up to him. It's, uh, it's very difficult when you're in a big hit, heavy hitting division, when you have a loss by KO and people have already were already talking about your chin and your punch resistance before that happened and now that may you know cause a lack of confidence in his head it may make him you know have this complex every time he gets in the ring that he knows that he hasn't got the best punch resistance um, and that may be a hindrance to him um, but you know let's give him the benefit of the doubt things happen one can happen once let's see if they happen again um, and let's see if Price can sort of like try and 
you know, build his game and improve his game to try and stop that happening again and to, to move forward and, and keep going. So I'm going to leave it there. I've been going on way too long. Um, thanks for watching and taking this in. This is Boxpred and I'm out.